Upcoming new fragrance releases in 2024. I like doing this series for you guys because I like to go online, mainly on iFragrance, which is a great fragrance news website. You should check them out if you haven't already, guys. And they often discuss and let us know about some upcoming releases that are gonna be released by some big brands with some big names. And usually they are flankers, but hey, these are some really interesting fragrances that are gonna be coming out soon. I've got six here in front of me that are quite interesting, and some of them are really gonna be hyped up. You'll see why in a second. Let's begin the video. So the first fragrance we need to discuss is YSL is releasing another Y flanker which is a little bit ridiculous because <laughs> there are so many flankers for the wild lies, a little bit redundant. But this actually has got me hyped annoyingly. I've been absorbed and dragged into the hype. And that is YSL's Y Elixir, which is a weird name. Or YSL Y Elixir? Y Elixir? I don't know. But it sounds interesting. So they have this new bottle design, which looks really cool. And I'm going to go straight to the notes. The Y Elixir notes, top notes are lavender, mid of fresh geranium, and base notes of sensual oud wood. If you guys don't know what geranium smells like, by the way, it's sort of like if rose became a lot more fresh and minty and with a hint of lychee as well, I think. Uh, so geranium is kind of like the more easy and less intense cousin of rose as a fragrance note. The note breakdown isn't too detailed, but that oud at the base sounds quite interesting. I wonder if they'll use real oud. I don't think they will. I think this is going to be a fragrance likely priced around £100. Probably use synthetic, really mass appealing oud. Kind of like they saw the hype and appeal of Tom Ford's oud wood. Maybe they're going to kind of go into that realm. I kind of think this is going to be a blue fragrance with some mainstream oud sensibilities. This could be really interesting though. YSL's YEDP Intense was a really good flanker in my opinion. It kind of didn't reinvent the wheel, but it's smoothed out the YSL YEDP DNA, for example. Y Elixir is a sexy and spicy woody scent that is darker and more mysterious than its predecessor thanks to an interesting note composition. The fragrance starts off with a fresh opening of lavender in the top notes, followed by a crisp heart of geranium, and finally, the freshness of the scent is contrasted with a woody base of sensual oud, resulting in a richer and more intense and luxurious interpretation of the original Y. I think this is going to smell deeper, darker, richer, as they said. It's probably not going to be as versatile as the majority of the Y line. I think this is going to be more of a cooler weather scent, definitely autumn and winter, and maybe spring. So maybe. It's going to smell more expensive, but it might not be as good value for money in that way. What do you guys think? Does that kind of reduce the appeal of the Y line? It's meant to be a, sort of like a dumb reach versatile line. So let us know, guys. Yeah, other than that, there's not much else that's been given on this uh, news page, but apparently it's already being sold on Macy's or at Macy's for $180. Is that for a 100 ml? That's quite a lot of money. <laughs> No, that is for the smaller 60 ml bottle, it looks like, $180. So $180 for 60 ml is around £150, I think. So maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they're using real oud. That is quite interesting. This is kind of going to be intrigued. Are you guys excited to be trying out YSL's Y Elixir? Hopefully I'll get my nose in this very soon. 32% of people who watch School of Scent are subscribed to us. If you guys wanna see our channel grow, to really help us out, click subscribe. Let's get that number to 40%, thank you. Givenchy are releasing a new gentleman fragrance called uh, Gentleman Society Extreme. So I'm presuming it's a flanker of the original Gentleman Society, which was kind of a, a disappointing flanker. I don't really know why it needs another <laughs> flanker of a flanker. It's a bit weird. I'm not sure if I'm gonna be excited for this. So the original society is an eau de parfum. Now this is an eau de parfum extreme, which is weird, a strange marketing gimmick, I think. Top notes of clary sage, peppermint, and nutmeg. Heart notes of iris concrete, okay. Narcissus, coffee extract, and vetiver quartet, okay. Base notes of organic cedar, organic sandalwood, and vanilla absolute. Okay, maybe this might be better than the original society. The original society was an amber synthetic lab molecule-esque mess. <laughs> That's why I didn't like that phrase. It's kind of reminded me of Stronger With You, but without the character or charm, and it just made it into a headache in a bottle, essentially. So this extreme sounds quite interesting. In the notes of Iris Concrete, so 
Oris Concrete is the actual natural version of Iris and the concrete comes from the fact that Oris is actually more of a butter that's formed after years of harvesting the notes. And so if they are using that, that's going to make the frames a lot more pricey uh, if they're using the real thing. Maybe they're still just using a, a synthetic iris, which is going to be a bit more powdery. Narcissus, I believe, is a, a flower, I think, that gives a more of a black currant effect to a fragrance. It's quite interesting. And the coffee and vetiver, hmm, it's going to be a very interesting fragrance. I think if they use more naturals and they go for the annoying synthetic notes like they did with the original Society, this could be a really good release. This is definitely looking more like an evening cold weather fragrance from this note breakdown as well. So I'm seeing that the 60 ml is going to be available for 102 euros in the official Givenchy website. So I'm suspecting they have not used Real Oris. Real Oris is one of the most expensive ingredients in perfumery, similar to the price of Real Oud. This is quite interesting. So Bulgari are releasing a new flanker of their older line, the Bulgari Om line. So I think there was Bulgari Om and then Bulgari Om or Man Extreme, something like that. And um, they were from the 90s, apparently. I, I kind of thought they smelled, like, yeah, a little bit like the old school, you know, older 2000s kind of style of perfumery. It's very fresh, aromatic, crisp. I remember that. It doesn't really stand out, though. <laughs> I remember just not really interested in it after I tried it in store. But uh, they're releasing a new Pour Homme Eau de Parfum. So Bulgari Pour Homme Eau de Parfum. Top notes of tea accord and ginger, mid notes of Ceylon, uh, tea extract and gaiac wood. Gaiac wood often gives it quite a rich woody aroma that's quite uh, smoky, it gives more of a smoky effect to the woodiness. Base notes of musk and bread, which is quite a, a mass appealing musky amber note, uh, and that's it really. Okay, so this could be quite sexy, it sounds quite natural. I think it's gonna be another fresh aromatic scent that's probably gonna last around six hours, that's kind of the vibe I'm getting, and it's probably gonna be very nice, relaxing and calming. Actually, this could be long lasting because it's an eau de parfum, so who knows. But I don't know, do they need to release a new flanker for this older line? Do you guys get excited for this? Are you hyped to try this out? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. But overall, I do think having these more relaxing, calming fragrance DNAs that are based around notes like tea or zonic notes, kind of like Silver Mountain Water or Mont Tobacco Intensiver by Ormond Jane. These are very nice, relaxing fragrances. Also, what's uh, Gucci Pour Homme 2 used to be before it got discontinued and Armani's Eau de Cedre as well before that also got discontinued. Very relaxing, calming notes that don't focus on this bubblegum, sweet, ambery <laughs> molecules that you see in the fragrance industry nowadays. Hermes is releasing another H24 flanker called Herbes Vives. <laughs> that is definitely not how you pronounce French words, guys. Do not follow my example. But this looks quite interesting. It's called a new urban inspired scent. So the H24 original, I wasn't a huge fan of. It was interesting how they were going for a new idea, but I don't think they executed it very well. I gave it a seven out of 10, I think. But the Eau de Parfum, actually, I prefer that. That was a bit richer, smoother, longer lasting. I only tried it on my hand, the back of my hand from the store, but it was good. I, I thought it was an improvement. So it's interesting they're releasing another flanker, uh, Vives Herbes. So I think that might mean, you know, lively herbs. So it might be more green and herbaceous. So that could be interesting because I kind of feel like the industry sometimes shies away from those kind of scent DNAs. Maybe a lot of people don't like that anymore. Maybe they see that as a more old school thing. Maybe this is more of a mature fragrance. Let's look at the notes. Top notes are herbal notes. Okay, kind of what we expected. Middle is pear granita. So interesting, a pear note with herbal notes. Interesting. And a base is Phi School. Interesting. I don't know what that is. As far as the blend is concerned, H24 Herbs Vives Eau de Parfum is a woody fragrance that embraces a delightful and fresh herbal bouquet with a bit of pear granita for a fresh and invigorating aroma while the dry down boosts liveliness thanks to the high tech molecule Phi School which acts as a cooling agent for prolonged and long-lasting freshness. So this sounds like it's going to be a very camphoraceous fragrance blend. Camphoraceous kind of means, you know, think of things like menthol, rosemary, thyme, very invigorating, cooling, herbal effects to this fragrance. This might be a really sexy, cooling, and nice and pleasant office fragrance. This could be interesting. I don't know what these new molecules are. I'm uh, an old man and I'm already falling behind the times with these new lab uh, discovered molecules. So this could be interesting. I don't know what this, what is gonna smell like. Hopefully it's a long lasting uh, freshness, that, that camphoraceous effect is lasting a long time. It's woody, it's invigorating, and that sort of minty cooling effect from those notes really lasts a long time. It'd be nice if the fragrance was like that. I'll keep an eye out for this one. It sounds quite interesting. What do you guys think of this? Jean-Paul Gaultier have released a new flanker called Le Mal Lover. 
Eau de Parfum, which I'm presuming is a flanker of the original Lamal, maybe? I don't know, it might be very far from it. So it's not another Le Beau fragrance. Paradise Garden came out as their last release, I believe, which I've yet to try. Have you guys tried it? Let us know your experience with it in the comments below. But let's focus on Lamal Lover. Let's see what this is about. So notes of finger lime. Okay, that's a more luxurious take on the lime notes. Ocean spray, so it's gonna be aquatic, ambergris, so it's gonna be marine, salty, vanilla, woody notes, amber and pepper. Interesting. This sounds like a sweeter taken on an aquatic. This could be a sexy aquatic fragrance, maybe an aquatic with balance. If you have sweetness and fresh oceanic aspects to a fragrance, you might get a versatile DNA that you can wear all year round. It sounds interesting. They're saying at the time of writing this article, it's gonna be available soon. A 125 ml bottle retails for 123 euros, which isn't crazy. That's kind of affordable. It is a limited edition perfume. Okay, bear that in mind, guys. If you wanna get this, you have to jump on it quickly. This is kind of like their older bottles, the Popeye and Superman fragrances. They were sweeter, minty takes on the original The Mouse. It was sort of like a sweet summer fragrance. So I kind of feel like they're, again, putting out another limited edition summer perfume with this that might be really sexy. Those fragrances were generally very highly praised. So maybe keep an eye out for this one if you want a new summer signature. And that concludes this video, guys. I really hope you enjoyed me uh, reading about these new upcoming releases. Are some of these exciting? Some Are some of these going to be on your radar now that you're excited about? For me, I think YSL's uh, Y Elixir might be quite interesting. And I'm also quite interested in the new H24 and that new Le Mal flanker. Givenchy's original society kind of disappointed me too much for me to be excited about the new flanker, the, the Extreme. And the Bulgari line, I'm not sure I'm that excited about their older stuff being reinvigorated, but who knows, they could also be really good. So hopefully uh, we can all experience these as soon as possible and see if we do like them and if the hype is matched. Let us know your thoughts guys, which frames are you looking forward to the most in the comments down below. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to check out our previous video that follows this series. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.